Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We liked our movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Send Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie with a Y. And I'm Sweetie with an IE. And say hello to your friends babysitters club say Say hello hello. to the people who care nothing's better than friends babysitters club don't you know that your friends are always there (sighs) hey guys we are living in an amazing time to be alive right now you may be depressed because of a pandemic and covid or whatever however I am living the high life because we are in the middle of a babysitter's club renaissance and I could not be happier. Um, Man. So babysitter's club series by Ann M. Martin from originally the seventies, maybe. Yeah. Let's look it up. Let's fact check it. Babysitter's club books. So started in 1986. Oh, sweetie, birth oh year. God. Yeah. Was the uh, first one. Christie's Great, great Idea. idea. Duh. What a great idea it was. Series by Ann M. Martin. Question, was Ann M. Martin like a uh, Carolyn Keene kind of type thing? Where it was like no, one writer and then it was, but well, she's a real person. Her okay, did she eventually not write some though and it became like a james patterson situation because maybe like the um, teen ones but i don't think i read something about like how the movie was a mashup of like two of the books but she didn't actually write those i'm confused um i don't know i mean she's only 64 years old so okay anyway yeah so 80s book series right and then what came after that And then they turned that into a television program, originally aired on HBO in 1990. HBO. And then was in syndication, but on Disney and Nickelodeon. Okay, that's what I thought. That's Um, that's where we saw it. Yeah, only one season. I thought there were so many more, but it was just one season, 13 episodes. Yeah, but it seemed like I was always watching it. And now in my head, I'm like, did I think that was a movie? Because now I'm like, I like mix a bunch of episodes together and... What's that sound? It's a weird sound. Sorry. Sorry. I was turning up my volume. I couldn't hear you. Huh. Um, you guys were remote again. Hate to burst <laughs> the in-person bubble that we were talking about endlessly last time. But I was bored today and didn't have any plans tonight. I'm like, let's do a remote app. So that's what we did. Um, correct. I am in the same boat as you. I thought there were many seasons of that show. Because I remember watching like many episodes. But I'm sure it just means I watched the same, like, the same episodes. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's like that Babysitter's times. Club movie <laughs> yeah. again. Right. <laughs> um, really, really cute. Um, and we're going to d- dive into each of these a little bit deeper. Um, that's the one I have like the closest kinship with, um, for sure. And it's cute in a 90s way, but it's pretty bad acting. And, uh, you know, it's like early 90s, like s- soft lighting on all the, the, well, <laughs> the camera work. Like, yes. Well, I enjoyed it. But yeah, yeah. But so that was that. And then five years later came the Babysitter's Club movie, which uh, was, you know, mid 90s, peak 90s, one would say. I mean, it feels like that's an entirely different decade, honestly, like the way yeah, that movie crazy. looks. I know. I can't believe the difference of five years. It's yeah. nuts. Well, also like TV versus film, I guess, too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that movie happened. Um, and then... Most recently, the, um, the the Netflix Netflix released a reboot a couple weeks ago, and it's been taking the 
you know, quarantine nation by storm. People are loving it. It is loving highly it. diversified. It is current and it's just really, really freaking good. I watched the whole thing. So he's only watched one episode so far. But uh, let me tell you, you guys, I have not stopped thinking about it. And I love it like to death. Like I think it's maybe the best show I've watched this year. Oh, yeah, um, it's adorable. Yeah. Stinking adorable. Netflix is like just hits it out of the park. They're just always doing such good stuff. Good for them. Um, yeah, I am super pumped about this. As people who have grown up basically from the beginning of the Babysitter's Club kind of journey. I mean, the, the books came out in the 80s, so obviously a little young for us, but they were for us, one of the first chapter books, I think, we read as like middle schoolers, and it was certainly a rite of passage. Um, if you were a kid born in the 80s, uh, especially a young girl, once you reached like, what would you say, like late elementary school, um, maybe even sooner, yeah. you'd yeah. go to that. And for us, we had like a section of the, um, so the, the our library had like the bottom floor was kids books so one half was like picture books and stuff and then the other half was chapter books so for the series books like we Andre and I feel like we went to okay there's one whole row a bookshelf of like Nancy Drew mysteries and we like ran down that and we're like these are great and then there was a whole row of the babysitters ones remember duh so good and you'd, we'd go there and go to the library and be like okay like what babysitters club book am I getting today and it was so exciting and it's it was a great little series for um you know a story about girl friendship I mean that's what kind of this the whole theme of the the books and the series are and the movie for sure is this time in your life when a lot of girls have these like female friendships which a large group of them and every girl in the group has like a role and they all come together but they're all like really good friends I know that's not everyone's kind of experience when you are that young but it's a lot of a lot of ours and baby boys too but I don't know I don't think it's something about like girls in these groups um for better or for worse it's kind of like how everything boils out with friendship so I think that really stuck out with a lot of girls and really connected them to it and why this has been able to be um a series that has passed from the 80s 90s and then kind of a big gap but yeah. now into the 2020s they're just timeless it's a timeless motif I guess um mm -hmm. and they're just it's gonna it can keep being reinvented because yeah. that's the way the story is. Like these kinds of relationships are hopefully always going to be around. Um, but yeah, but today, I mean, today, tonight we're mostly going to focus on the movie and then we'll talk about the nineties show for a little bit. And then, um, I will gush and, uh, talk a ton about not a ton, but like just a couple of choice things about the series. Um, no major spoilers, but just overall thoughts and and that'll be that's our night and it's gonna be great and i'm i'm excited oh what a night late july in 2020 we talked about the baby sitters club endlessly wow pretty good get on <laughs> It's too hard to sing together if we're apart. I know. We can't do that awkward thing where I read your lips about what the next lyric's going to be and creep you out with my bug eyes. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> Miss um, those days. I mean, it hasn't been that long. I think the last time you did that was when we were at my house and we did, uh, what did we do? Watcher in the Woods. Watcher in the Woods. We were, couldn't pause it. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I missed all the good stuff. There I'm at. Anyways, that did not happen tonight because no. uh, things were flawless. But uh, yeah, so anything else to say before we begin this journey? No, um, I'm excited. It was a great time capsule jump in the time machine night. And <laughs> I, I do really enjoy though. That's what this podcast is about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's like, that's like our subtitle. That's the jam. All right. It's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah, sweeties. I don't have a quote. <laughs> Leave me alone. I have allergies, okay? <laughs> Christy. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> She's like, they like sobbing hysterically. <laughs> it's allergies. What are you allergic to? Summer. That's good. That's good. Uh, Christy Thompson is a 13-year-old gal who has just gone out of school uh, for the summer 
summer vacay. She has some friends and they have an amazing club. So uh, friend Claudia, Stacy, Dawn and Marianne, plus two sub friends, Jesse and Mallory, who are junior officers for like no real reason that I can see. Like I'm confused like what their role is. Like, why are they just junior officers? I think they're capable of babysitting. They're only like a year younger than these uh, these other girls. It yeah, just seems they're very, definitely like, younger. That's elitist. why they're younger, they're and they weren't that much younger. A, original like members that the, that founding group, which was Christy, Stacy, Marion, Claudia. I feel like Dawn was last because she was like the new California girl in town, right? And then I forget how they picked up Mallory and Jesse. And like how that I that was like some book or something I where those they got introduced the, the TV show in the new show yeah. Mallory is actually like one of the kids they they babysit right for like a family yes, with yes, a yes. ton of kids and yes. then Jessie's that is how it her, happens and then Jesse's like her best her friend. friend yeah 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 um, but I, yeah are they not allowed to babysit like I don't not allowed to babysit alone are they just like mother's helpers. Right, because there's that whole thing, questions. yeah, mother's helpers, where the moms have to be there, but you're just, like, supervising the kids while they're, like, working. I did that. I was a mother's helper for, like, a year. And you really are, like, too. 11. Because 11 does see, or, like, 10 and 11 does seem, like, kind of old to be, uh, young to be watching children. So that makes sense. But then, like, what's the difference with a year? Like, a year. You could be 12 and be like, okay, here's, like, three kids to look after. Right. Another what's couple of years, you can go to a teen dance club. Um, but, but, it's okay. all the so same. Much, it's so all much to say about that. So, Jimmy was officially creeped out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Um, anyway, so Christy and her friends have the Babysitters Club, which is a club where they get together and sit in someone's room, in Claudia's room, for like an hour. And then people call in and ask for a babysitter and they schedule, they have this book of their schedules and then they schedule the babysitters and then that's it. So, um, it's summer, so things they don't get to see each other as often, so they're like a little sad about that. Christie's putting up like a babysitter club flyer and sees another flyer for a seniors camp at um, in Stony Brook, Connecticut, which is where they are. And she's like, "Guys, I have a great idea. We can have a kids camp in Marianne's backyard for like three months, and <laughs> it'll be great. We can charge a lot of money and make a lot of money." So they like do out the math. I forget how much they said that they were charging. Oh, I don't I don't remember how much they said they were charging, but the grand total yeah. was like an was obscene full, amount of projected money. Projected to be seven thousand yeah. dollars. So Which in nineteen ninety and also in middle school dollars is like a ton of money. Right. But that's like the whole summer. It was only like a hundred and twenty dollars or something for the kids. Right. I don't know. And this seemed but, like they dwindled. Like it seemed like there were a lot of kids in the beginning, and yeah. then at the end, there's just like four. I was like, hello. In the final picture, yeah, there's only like six kids. So. <laughs> just they all no. dropped out. They zero out of five would not sucked. recommend. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so they're all really excited about it. Um, but it's again a summer, so there's all these other things happening. So everybody has their own kind of like little side plot. So just real quickly, we can get out the like non important ones out of the way. Um, Claudia, notoriously bad at school other than art class. Um, she is having a hard time passing this like science class. She has to pass the science test, or I think she stays back. A grade or she something failed middle school science which right so wouldn't wow. she have to like repeat wasn't that no the she, risk you, so i i guess if you fail um i didn't fa i never failed anything in like middle school or high school you have to go to summer school and then pass it there to be able to like move yeah. on to the what next like fail? phase of it i know i think I don't you know. stay back so, what for for doing one subject yikes I don't, that I mean, sucks I don't, she wasn't good at like any of her subjects so i mean um, fails so she's working up to that, trying to like pass that test. And, and Christy's like, I'll help you. I'll make sure that you pass, blah, blah, blah. So that's Claudia. Uh, Stacy has our favorite <laughs> illness, uh, the diabetes, which uh, type one. So she's had it since she was little. Um, and well, not too little, I guess. I guess. She, yeah, I think it was just a couple of years ago that she like discovered she had. This. Oh, OK. Um, or like last year. So she's not really telling people. This is hard because I'm mixing it up with all of them, all of the mediums in like one time, like the TV show and the movie no, and her, the 90s show. All her show. friends know. 
I know. I'm just, yeah. but from the TV show, they didn't. So I'm like mixing right. up. I'm now mixing up all the different kinds of characters, um, the different versions of Stacy. So let me get back in my who is okay. So Stacy. Okay. So Stacy's from New York City. She's very posh. She like shopping. Um, she is like <laughs> she's, she's defined by shopping. <laughs> yes, yeah. she's like funny. guys. There was a sale. We know. Um, but she's good at math. She's good she's, at math. She's the treasurer and wears pearls. Uh, yeah. Claudio is, is the vice president, by the way, because they meet in her bedroom. So that is how she got that gig. But so, uh, Stacy, and then we have. Uh, Dawn, who is Miss Nature Lover, originally from California. Um, her side plot is... Oh, we didn't talk about Stacy's side plot, is that she has a crush on a boy who is 16? Yes. Named Luca and from, from Germany. Germany. Um, so that's her little thing, being like, how do I keep my diabetes under wrap from this cute guy? And how do I keep my real age away um, so she's battling two secrets, really. Um, and then Mary Ann, who is um, when it, Christy's like best friend, she grew up next to. Um, she has like a very overprotective father. Her side plot is that she has a boyfriend named Logan. Are they boyfriend girlfriend in this in the movie? No, I can't remember. Well. Uh, well, it's always kind of fuzzy. I mean, and we'll go over this in the TV series from the 90s, too, because they keep saying, like, they're friends, but mm. then people refer to him as her boyfriend. So, I mean, it's that, like, kind of weird middle just, school yeah, relationship it it where you're, like, definitely, like, dating, but you don't do anything. Yeah. Like, you might, like, maybe kiss a little bit, but there's no actual, right. like physical yeah. stuff so like who who is that person to you then you're it's a boy that's a friend it's a boyfriend you know like that kind of dumb shit uh, but there's that there's not other really other plot with her she's well, basically just like supporting well, the bitchy girl is trying to oh. steal logan so there's like oh, that I, whole thing oh, um, okay again with that whole yeah, thing yeah but yeah, yeah it's okay. pretty dumb she doesn't she doesn't they don't do marianne uh justice no, in justice the movie for all. sure I know marianne was always like one of my favorites <laughs> you are definitely a marianne i was definitely ten percent <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mary Ann is has a stepsister Dawn, who's originally but from I'm not California. Quiet like that. I'm a well, loud Mary. All like Sorry. a little bit different pieces. But I, I would say you're dominantly Mary Ann with like I don't know a little Stacy sprinkled in here and there. A little you Christy love shopping. A little Christy bossy wise. Oh, a lot of Christy, maybe maybe like <laughs> half. Yeah. We're all we're all a little bit we're of all, everyone. It's like Sex in the City. Yeah, you're a little exactly. bit everybody. Yeah. Um. So Dawn is from California. Marion's stepsister is like hippy dippy. Loves the loves nature. Eats like a five thousand pound bowl of sunflower seeds <laughs> as a meal. Um. She is just like very earth loving and loves recycling. Um. And her side plot also again really not done much justice in this movie there's this weird guy who has a crush on her and he's like all summer trying to like get her to go out with him but he's doing it in a very awkward way because he's obviously on the spectrum and he is just she doesn't know what to do about it even though i'm like uh i think you didn't she didn't know that he had that he know. liked her please i know the ending was so he's dumb. done um and then who am i missing claudia stacy christy um, Any other Jess subplots? Uh, Mallory and Jesse, but oh, yeah. they don't have but they subplots, don't have right? subplots because yeah. they're junior members. So okay, so those are everyone else's little side plots. Then we have the the overarching subplot of the summer camp, um, which is just like how are they going to keep this camp like up and running throughout the summer? Wait, you went over Christy's subplot because that's well, the major not yet. One. That's the third. That's okay. the third one I was going to okay. say. But I guess. I mean, it's very confusing because they're like all these same plots at the same time. What do you mm. focus on? I don't know. Um, but I just I guess we can talk just briefly about like the overarching like setting of this movie is at the summer camp um, where they have their I don't know how what like the logistics of this camp are like how long are the kids there? How long did it go for? Is it every single day? Is it just the weekdays? Um, I just have a lot of questions. So, I think it's weekdays when parents are at work, like their kids aren't at school, right? So mm, they need yeah, a place to dump the kids. So I think it's like nine to five every day, which okay, is that's like, insane. that's a lot. Um, I know. I cannot. 
believe that. So that's and they only charged a hundred twenty dollars. Well, for the I whole forget. Summer? Yeah, I forget what the amount was, but yeah. So um, Don and Marianne have this like big backyard, and then they have this new neighbor who's um, into gardening and does not appreciate the noise of a nine to five summer camp for children. Which obviously, hello, I would not either. I'd be calling the cops in 0.3 seconds. <laughs> can't call the cops on children. Sure. Yes, you can. I'm pretty sure it's an illegal. You can't. That is such a liability, like a legal liability to have like. Well, Christy says they didn't need a permit for that. And I was bullshit. Yeah, that's There's what I'm no saying. way you could have 20 kids in a backyard oh. and be like, and I don't know. I just, yeah, right. I feel like you would need some and like insurance yeah. and like all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, Marianne's dad had them fill out like signed contracts, but like, I don't, I don't know. It just seems, it seems suspicious. Yeah. It's so, fishy. yeah. So there's that grumpy neighbor next door and then they find this greenhouse that they want to renovate to become their new clubhouse. So that's like their main goal, like fin- getting all that money from the summer camps and fixing up this greenhouse for their uh, club. And then we have Ms. Christy. So <laughs> Christy is the president. She's super bossy. She's a tomboy. Um, she wears ugly baseball hats and really dirty shoes and which means like oh it's a tomboy look out doesn't like clean shoes whoa um and she lives with her mom and stepfather watson they live in this like big beautiful house and she has a stepsister and a little brother um she has a bunch of other siblings too that they don't even mention or talk about in the movie so i guess they don't eliminated them but she does have her adopted sister so she has a um so it's weird. I don't know if they just did this in the movie, but I think the adopted sisters in the series too. But so normally she has Karen and then uh, David Michael is. I was going to say, I keep calling him George Michael. Right. So David, David Michael. Michael is like her real brother. Right. And then yeah. there's Karen. And then there's another little one, like another boy un- after like before Karen. And then Christy has two older brothers who are like very attractive, supposedly. And yeah, so it's a huge fam. Um, so she, um, her dad is out of the picture. She like mentions him, I think like haphazard or something is like, oh, my dad left, um, a long time ago and he never comes back or something. So it's a dead be dad situation, guys. So they're going along summer, la-di-da, la-di-da. And then she comes home one day and sees a yellow VW bus and a man in a like really thin suit. Uh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like khaki shorts material suit, like that thickness. Um, Should have given you the uh, warning right there with his thin suit, how what he would be. <laughs> it's weird. Look at it again. It's like really weird. Deadly dead. <laughs> um, but it's her dad. Surprise. And he's being kind of weird. And he's like, don't tell your mom I'm here. And she's like, okay. And she's just like, she's a little suspicious at first. She's like, why are you here, dad? Like, you've sent me like two postcards my whole life. Um, (laughs) Like, thanks. Also, yeah, why are you here? And he's like, well, I'm going to, I'm trying to move back, honey. Like, I got a, I got a job off, like possibility at like a sports anchor or something, which maybe explains why he's wearing the weird thin suit. Um, But why is he driving a VW yellow bus? Like, uh, <laughs> I thought to he camping. I think because he like drove across country no, because, and uh, for, across crunch, country. Where was he? I don't. I think he was out west or something. Oh. I mean, the guy seems like not a great a lot person. Of details. Yeah, he seems yeah. dodgy. And he's and he's like um, clearly like kind of manipulated, manipulative, manipulative. Uh, Because he goes to Christy like, okay, like, um, I got this job, but it hasn't started yet. It's starting next week. So um, you can't tell your mom. But I don't get it. Because she lives in a mansion now, and I just can't walk walk in there and be like, I don't have a job, and like basically look like a loser. (laughs) So you can't tell anybody that I've rolled into town. So it's like, like what kind of manipulative, secret. sketchy shit is that? But uh, yeah, but the only person that knows is Marianne because she was with. Oh, I guess that's Marianne's other subplot is keeping Christie's secret. Mm-hmm. So um, she knows, and then like that's that's it though. Everyone else, no one else knows. So Christie, poor Christie, is like so excited, obviously, to have her dad back. So she's kind of changing her normal behaviors because she's she's just caught up in the the like allure of of having her real dad back which is like all she's ever wanted i just thought of something i know why they eliminated her siblings because it's like how would he have like 
Oh, right. Why would he have just come back and interacted with her if he had all these other kids? Like, he would have well, had but to. But if that other kid, wasn't that other kid his kid? David no, Michael? No, they didn't even mention, like, that was his kid. Oh. Hmm. I think they're both with, like, the stepdad, maybe. Uh, I don't know. But, well, also, David Michael's, like, too young. I mean, he's, like, what, five years old? So he's not going to, like. still want to see your other kid. I know. Uh, the whole, I mean, that, that whole dad is just. Yeah, he's ugh. sketchy. He's going to be the creeps. Sketchy he sucks. He is thick. So, um, Christy starts behaving like very strangely. She's late. She forgets to pick up her little brother. He like <laughs> is <laughs> just like this weird shot of him like stumbling through the town, like like wandering through the <laughs> through, town with through a crosswalk, yeah, through a like, crosswalk, uh. like doesn't understand that cars are a thing, and is like, oh, mom, dad, and is like crying. Poor little buddy. Um, so she forgets to pick him up. She's yeah, she's late to meetings. Everyone's like, "What's wrong with you, Christy?" Claudia's like. This is very unlike you. She's Claudia just like tells it like it is. I love her. Yeah. Um, she's like, you are dumb. Um, but she's still not telling her friends, not telling her friends, even though she continuously lets them down. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's and is, she's having fun with her dad. Right. They're doing she's all this like so fun much sports fun. stuff. He's buying her dr- like a dress, even though okay. she doesn't wear dresses. Creepy as fuck. Like who? I don't know. Hasn't, who hasn't seen their daughter in like 10 years is, is like, oh, I bet I know what size, like how does he know what size she is? Um, the whole does he thing know her not, at all? Not Obviously good. not. No. When did she start no, becoming a tomboy? Like, ugh, it just creeped me out. Like, don't get your daughter's dresses when they're 13 years old. Like, that's weird. We like to yeah. buy our own clothes at that point. Dad. Um, I know. It was just really weird. So, and at this point, he does not have his new job yet, even though it's been like weeks. And what's and his excuse? They're like the signing or something? I don't even know. And why he has to go to lengths to like lie to your 12 year old daughter is like abs- absurd. She's 13. Um, but 13, sorry. So it's, and like, and the worst part is that she's like, okay. So the worst part is that she's being so secretive that everyone in her, the babysitter's club, thinks she has a boyfriend. Because they're like, who's that Christy's getting into a car with? Like, who's that? And then she's also talking on the phone and having these long conversations with him in her house. And the stepdad's like, who's that, Christy? (laughs) Like, what? Hello? (laughs) And she's like, and she's like kind of whispering and being all shady. I mean, that is like, okay, I mean, this is kind of before online predators, but yeah, like... I know they have a lot going on, but yeah, they don't seem to be like noted other than the fact that she forgot to pick up her little brother. They're not like that concerned about it, apparently. So now it's approaching Chrissy's birthday. So her friends are super excited. They, they're they going to stay at uh, Mallory's family's cabin. Um, and meanwhile, her dad is like, let's go to Monty's, which is this like theme park. We'd ride the monster until we puke. I thought the monster would be like a roller coaster, but it appears to be just a Ferris wheel. Um, oh, I don't know why you need to ride the Ferris wheel 800 times. Um, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> You're just going Not around. a fan of Ferris wheels. going around and around and around. Sweetie Dumas. <laughs> well, it's like you don't, I mean, a roller coaster, yeah, that's a, f- a thrill you want to keep yeah. experiencing, but no, a Ferris wheel is just very Ferris leisurely. Fun, but that's just one one ride, ride, ride around yeah. is, is fine so christy's like oh guys i'm gonna be a little late to my party and they're like oh really and she's like yeah but i'll get I'll, i'm getting my own ride there so meanwhile her fucking dad never comes and then she calls his hotel or whatever and they're like he checked out and he hasn't left her a message 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 so she freaks out and is like well he must have forgotten to pick me up and uh, i'll just meet him at the theme park yeah so she hops in a cab. Who knew there were so many cabs in Stony Brook, Connecticut? <laughs> I, honestly, I never saw a single cab where we grew up, which I know is not like a s- true suburb, but like didn't that always struck me. I was like, why are there always so many cabs? And how do kids know how to get one? Um, but so she goes well, there. In a small little town like that, it's not like a hailing cab situation. Right. So you'd, you'd have, she'd to, have call to call it. <laughs> so that, it's just another strange plot hole. So she gets to the theme park and is like, Basically just like running around trying to find men that look like her dad and like sees them and is like, dad? And it's never her dad. And then she's there until it's fucking closed. And then she's like stuck on the creepiest carousel ever with the like little um, cl- <laughs> little like Baroque <laughs> conductor man <laughs> who's like, D- oh, he's so creepy. I hate it. Um, and then they lock her in there and it's pouring rain at this point. And she's like upset and crying. She gets on the payphone, calls the Mallory's cabin, 
Luckily, she like had that number handy. How did she have the number? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Cabin. Maybe as like a precaution. I don't know. So line cuts out, though, before she can tell them like where she is. So everyone's freaking out and they're like, Marianne, you have to tell us where she is. And Marianne's like, I ca- I promised I wouldn't tell. And meanwhile, they're like, she could be dead. Like, just <laughs> fucking tell them. It's what a good like- friend, though. I'm going to tell Marianne a secret if I ever have one. Holy crap. Yeah. It, it okay, that is good, how yeah. I am not like Marianne because I would never be able to keep that secret in a hundred years. <laughs> well, it's not like I mean, I feel like the friends are a little safer telling. Like they're not yeah. gonna tell exactly. Like, come on. And I just feel like the secret was like not that big of a no. deal secret, you know. No, it was so weird. Yeah. Um so finally she she tells them and then they, they need a car. I don't know how they decide knew that she was gonna be. Did she tell Marianne that they were supposed to go to that theme park? I guess. Yeah. Okay. Must she must have. I thought she just like guessed. Um, but <clears throat> so Stacy calls up Luca, who unfortunately has things have soured because he found out she was fourteen years old. Um sorry, thirteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh she calls him for a lift in his like old fashioned truck thing, which that's not his though, because he's from Germany. No. Whose right. car was that? And how does he have a driver's license? And how do they all fit in there? I don't know. Why does he wear that <laughs> stupid cap? <laughs> Luca. So they find Christy. It's all, it's exciting. They they hug her. And then they have their nice little like birthday with her like drying off and they have the cake and it's very sweet. So then um, Christy goes, you know, back home and she finally tells her mom the truth of like why she's been acting weird. And her mom's like pissed, obviously. As you would be if you're like, great. He just like fucking took you through you for a loop for this whole summer. Like, what the fuck? Writes her a letter. And the letter is like some bullshit nonsense of like, I'm sorry. I tried. Don't hate me. And it was like literally the worst letter ever. Was- when that scene happened, I'm like, OK, like the dad is like a piece of shit garbage bag. But this is going to be a nice letter about how he was so sad. He stood her up. And this is why whenever. And it was literally just like he Christy, uh, sorry I couldn't make it. The job fell through. Uh, driving to Colorado, like have sorry. a happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> sorry I left you hanging on your birthday. Like, it was so so, so horrible. And then he kind of was like, "It was so great spending time with you. Like, miss you. Bye." Like, <laughs> he's the worst. The worst. He's literally the, the worst. worst. And also the worst part. And I know this is an awkward position for her mother, but how the mother was like basically just being like well like that's just your father that's, that's just the, the way he one is. of the great things about him it's he's yeah. a giant dick like he, he's just he's <laughs> that's the great thing about your dad he's like so fun like would you be saying <laughs> that if someone like literally conned your, your daughter all summer left her high and dry at an amusement park and sent her like a shitty letter saying oh hey sorry i had to skip town didn't get my job bye what no no, oh, no. that was really weird. And again, like I think that's an awkward position for the mom because she doesn't want to like alienate her too much from the dad. But I think you can call it what it is and say, um, "Your dad's a shithead," and this is exactly why I divorced him. Like, I mean, hopefully hello. Christy if it, like sees that now and like won't fall for this shit again. Right? Because um, I don't, I don't like that thing about how. You know, I think you can be mad at your parents and you can say, okay, like you're a shitty person. Just because you're my dad, I don't have to keep going back to you when you like literally give me nothing. Yeah. You know, it, it should be like most other relationships where you can be like, okay, until you like prove you're an okay person, like we're not hanging out anymore. I'm not yeah. accepting your letters. I'm not saving your stupid letters. Not you know? wearing your fucking dresses, your fucking ugly yeah, dresses. Right? Like, um, oh, yeah. horrible so, man. So now that's over. Uh, camp is over. Unfortunately, with all the overhead um, costs of renting two porta potties for the entire summer, and sourcing the <laughs> the uh, creation of fifty pot holders custom stamped, um, they their final profit is only one hundred and sixty eight dollars. But they do fix up the greenhouse and they get the committee to come. And they're like, well, listen, girls, you it was, to, it was to be able to do like business uh, to have the club in that house. Yeah, that's I why. Said, yeah, yeah, I said that. In the beginning. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, but they can't uh, because they make a profit. They're technically a business. But then who should be on the committee? But the the, the uh, mean next door neighbor lady. And she saves them because she's like, well, what's their profit? It can't be that much. And actually, it isn't because they only made one hundred and sixty eight dollars. Thank goodness. 
So they don't technically count because you need at least $1,500 to be considered a business. So they get the greenhouse and then they're like, well, it's too hot in here. So forget that idea. Even though we just spent, we just made all these children um, clean and fix the greenhouse with us as a summer activity for the camp. Really just slave, like, you know, trying to get them to clean everything. Like, that's yeah. bullshit. Um, <laughs> but then they decide, again, the greenhouse, it's a greenhouse. Hello. It's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be cozy in there. Um, so they're like, it's too hot. Let's stay in <laughs> Claudia's room. And then they give the greenhouse to the neighbor and they like wheel her over all these flowers and they're in their wagons. And then they have $16 left over. They get a pizza and they have fun. And that's it. Um, Babysitter's Club, which is not the right song. They don't have a good theme song uh, as, as the TV oh, show, na, that's for sure. Hey. It's pretty good. It's pretty catchy. I, like- I, don't, I, I don't know what the new one is. Oh, the new one. Not the new one. I, was, yeah. I mean, the movie. The movie one is good. Oh, I don't remember. I only remember the TV show. That's hey, no, 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 hey. when Is it Bewitched? <laughs> hey, no, no, no. no, but yeah. there's Friends a forever. really embarrassing rap part of it that I was okay. like dying at. Oh, it was so bad. No, no. Well, not that's the just science. like typical. Not the uh, science rap. Like the actual Babysitter's Club theme song. If you like watch a little bit of the credits, they play the whole thing. And there's like a really embarrassing rap where they rhyme the words like. Um, <laughs> they like pronounce something weird just so they can rhyme it with like worry. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the flick. What, sweetie? What did you text me when you were watching this flick? Well, I feel like this film suffers from a couple things. The main one being that is boring. <laughs> it is really really boring, and I was really sad because um, I do remember this being um, when it came out like a big deal and being people being really excited about it. I did not see it in the movie theater. I've probably seen it once all the way through, um, and probably a little soon after it came out. Um, I think it has a fatal flaw of being centering on that really like the relationship with Christy and her dad which no one fucking cares no, about no one cares give me more babysitting first of all Christy like, I miss yeah the, this is this is the thing about the babysitting club it was my favorite thing them sitting in Claudia's room and answering the phone and being like hey Mr. Richardson oh okay Saturday at two great we'll get back to you right. like I love which, the hangout in the room which they don't do in, they don't do throughout this entire all. movie you just so hear they it flopped it because it was a summer credits. vacation right. yeah they, they flopped it on summer vacation so like no one is asking for babysitting I presume because parents are kids are home I don't even know I mean I go I don't know why you wouldn't need babysitters like in year. the summer but whatever so then they switch to this summer camp thing which is great but that eliminates them all going to different babysitting jobs which i feel like was like the whole point of those books because yeah. they would interact with different kids or different families and like on their own and then dealing with their own problems second of all like no one gives if you're a teenage girl who clearly this movie is for i don't think you give a shit about someone's relationship with their like deadbeat dad i mean well, that's not dead, something well, maybe they interested have a deadbeat dad in. well, we're not well, interested maybe, in it because we obviously didn't have a deadbeat dad no i know but like and i'm sorry if you had a deadbeat dad but like <laughs> is that for entertainment value like i don't think so no, i mean w- is, what do teenage girls want yeah. friendship shit which this did have but it was kind of not till the end that it was like pretty good friendship mm-hmm. shit and then like stuff about boys which there is a tiny little bit about it <laughs> But I'm sorry, it was like creepy and weird. I didn't feel good about it and it just felt out of place. Yeah. So I just felt like it was missing those key elements that, and it just got to be, for me, like boring and it felt really long. Like it wasn't funny. That There wasn't like clever parts to it. Again, there was like some good friendship stuff by the end, which I like did enjoy when all the girls were crying, like cutting the melted ice cream cake. I'm like, oh yeah, man, <laughs> like girlfriends are the best but before then like i didn't i didn't care or really even feel that these girls were that good of friends other than marianne and christy true yeah yeah i would agree with that and christy's like nobody's favorite person um i'm right sorry right. If why, she was, why but, center around her because she's the president she's supposed to be like the main character but it's like yeah it's annoying um so we didn't talk about who's in this so um we have um christy is uh, whatever her name is, Fawn something. Skylar. Um, no, Skylar something. She, 
she is, as Sweetie informed me, Sissy Spacex uh, daughter. Mm. Did not inherit her good acting chops. No, she I is will say she is insufferable great. in this movie. No. <laughs> um, she does this uh, awkward good thing word. where she is like breathy and is like... <clears throat> She just like talks really quietly when she's supposed to be like emotional about something. Like they're like, okay, your emotion is distraught. And she's like, I just wanted to mess the box. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> it's so bad. And she's just like, like we said in the beginning, she's just like, I'm, I'm not crying, okay? <laughs> I'm not crying. I have allergies. And like, it's just so, it's so bad. Um, and there's a couple lines like that where she just like screams something. They're like, they're like, you're angry. And so she just like yells whatever the line is that she's supposed to say. This, yeah. She was also in Orange County, which I don't mm-hmm. think she was as bad as that. She played like an actual character of like kind of like a Dawn character, if I remember correctly. But she was OK oh, in okay. that. Yeah. Um, but uh, and because I, of this movie, I just hate her. And I can't like I don't. Uh, maybe it's because of the TV series that we grew up with, but I just don't see her as a Christie. She was just like not a Christie to me. Yeah, I will always all. picture the girl from the TV show as Christie. Me too. I feel like she has to be bossy. I didn't really find that that Christie was bossy in the movie at all. Um, I feel like she's always kind of like a short little jock with dark hair. Um, I don't know. And that's kind of how she was drawn in the in like the book series. Mm-hmm. And it just she like didn't I don't know she just didn't fit at all I feel yeah. like as as it that character yeah I mean she was distracted the whole summer so she wasn't like herself like her usual yeah. Christy character which you know is like we may not like her but it's still it's her character um, and then we have Larissa Olnick who um, Alex Mack Ten Things I Hate About You uh, plays Don uh, freaking Rachel Lee Cook plays Mary Ann which kind of freaks me out that Rachel Lee Cook is like the same age as the secret world of Alex Mack, Alex Mack. Like, did that freak you out? Like, I just felt like, I guess it makes sense because well, 10 Things I Hate right. About You, she's all, yeah, I mean, it, it fits. Yeah. But, they, but they were great. I mean, they were good. I mean, I love Larissa Olenek. She's so, she's just like a little breath of fresh air and everything she does. I just feel like she's, she's just great. And she was a really good Dawn. I thought she did like a great yeah. job. That character was kind of in like a weird position because she's just being like stalked by that guy. <laughs> Basically, Alan. Alan. Alan? Yeah. Who is like pretty cute, but he, like you said, I think he might be on the spectrum so he can get like a little bit, you know, is, you know, acting. I don't, I'm not using the word normal, but like is, you know, 13 year old boy, whatever, and then gets just kind of like zany. Yeah. I, like, and, and then that's, zany. Like, that's how they show it. I'm not like saying that's like how they portray it. Um, so it's like a weird position for her, but she does like cave at the end and does like agree to go out with him. But like Sweetie said, like she is told at the beginning that she, he has a crush on her, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bullshit. And then he agrees to work at the babysitting camp for free. Hello. And then um, at the end of the summer is like, hey, I've been trying to ask you out all summer. And she's like, really? What? No way. I don't Like totally, it. totally serious. Yeah. Like we're like, are you kidding me? Literally everyone else. I don't know. Anyway, so that was like weird. And she does agree to go out with him. But I'm like sad that that's her only subplot because I feel like that was like a wasted yeah, use it totally of was. that yeah. actress because she had done out Al- she was doing alex mack or had done it before this so everyone like knew and if you look at the movie poster it was interesting because the only people on the movie poster are christy stacy and her hmm. so that's the only people that they highlight as having like i would it's say really like weird. legit plots and then all the men are on it what? um yeah but not so. marianne whose man was there? um are they in the flower petal you just didn't see them no, I, I the movie poster I had only had the three girls, and then they're like their guys. Yeah, but whose guy was Chris? Oh, her dad. Um, no, it was. Oh, sorry, no. I thought. Wait, Mar- maybe Marianne was on it too then, because Logan maybe was on it. I'm looking it up. No, it's all of them. They're like on a hammock thing. No, I I just okay. I yeah, there's all different one. ones. Okay, this one yeah. with the flower. Yeah, is <laughs> yeah okay. Is Don <laughs> so weird? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Christie's not on this cover. Yeah, it's oh Don. My God. 
Don, Mary Ann, Luca, Stacy, and Logan on the side, not even next to Mary Ann. It's very strange. They like How sent they everybody not put home. Christy and they were like, on Shoot. the cover. Christy is like the entire movie and the story. That's so weird. Anyway, so I don't know if they just use people that they like had previous had careers. Around. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So that so that's yeah. um or okay oh wait people in the and, movie but like nobody else though. Oh, oh no, what okay, hello sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm, we're not done with who's in this movie yet. Okay, so. so the Luca character, which we did not go into that subplot. Well, because I knew you wanted to talk about it, but he's not. Okay, from, so he's like not from anything. Well, he was in. I know he's in something, but he was in Saved by the Bell, the new yeah, class. Only I two episodes, up. though. Oh, I yeah. thought he was like a fixed no, person. It didn't, it didn't anyway, so it. but he is like a German guy. He's yeah. a real guy. So he is this like cousin of someone she babysits, right, Stacy? So she goes over there and expecting it to be like a little boy who's coming for the summer, but it's actually a sixteen-year-old. So she's like, "Oh, Luca's hot, whatever." So she ends up like kind of flirting with him, whatever. She's the babysitter, so he doesn't know how old she is. So they kind of, he asks her out and they go for a hike and she's like all dressed up, like ready to go on a real date. And her mom's like, did you eat a muffin? Like, have you eaten anything? Because she's diabetic. And remember like diabetes. I did, but I couldn't like, I know she was from something. What is it? She's from Wayne's World, the the wife of the the arcade guy. Yes. Noah's Arcade. Yes. She Noah's like arcade plays good the one. same exact yes. character, like a yes. weird airhead lady so the mom's really like uh, protective of her so she's like mom i'm fine i'm fine so she goes like hiking in this really nice outfit and luca's like okay come on we're almost to paradise they're like hiking let's go let's go and she's like um she's like i'm so tired and then she sits down and then she has to like fess to him that she has diabetes and like didn't eat her muffin or whatever (laughs) so passed out um i don't think she even took a muffin (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> and she's so so they have this like moment, so that's really nice. So they kind of like are dating a bit. Again, she hasn't told him that um, she's thirteen. He's sixteen. BTW, which you're like, okay, yeah. three years is not a big deal, but a sixteen year old and a thirteen year old is a big deal yeah. in terms of okay, I'm in middle school and you're in the middle of high school. You can drive a car. Like I'm a while from that. Well, yeah, it it is a, a big deal, and and that's why there's those rules and like you know statutory rape stuff and stuff because that is like kind of weird, right? Mm-hmm. So. For some reason, her parents allow her to go to New York City (laughs) with him. Do they not see this man who looks at least 25 years old and not 16? Like, if anything, I think he's like aged down because I think he's actually probably like 20 years old. He is. So we looked at it. Okay, I'm going to finish the story. Then I'm going to talk about that. So they go to this club and (laughs) um, Luke is like, okay, like, oh, we're going this. So it says 16 and up club, which, okay. Uh, Does are not there 16 exist. And up clubs? <laughs> okay. The juice bar. The, the I think there are 18 and up clubs, which means like you can go in and get a big mark on your hand that says you can't drink. Remember, we took you there, sweetie. One yes, time. I recall to this. Uh, it was like a music venue, so you can see music, but if you're not 21, they extra hand, so you cannot in any way get alcohol. Doesn't mean your sisters can't buy you alcohol, but you cannot order one at the bar. <laughs> So, but 16, like maybe it's a New York thing. I don't know. So she goes there in line at the club and he gets in first. And then um, she's like, you know, pretty girl. And is like, oh, I think I left my ID in my other purse. And she, the guy's like, the bouncer's like, sorry, sweetie, like not going to work here. And then whoever Luca's with, he's like, she's like, oh no, you got your ID right here. And I think it's her middle school <laughs> student ID. And the guy's like, nice try. Like you're 13. And Luca, who have they like kissed at this point? I don't think so. Or done anything? I okay. think so. I but anyway, like Luca starts freaking out as you would. Like that's pretty sketchy. Mm-hmm that his like new date and love interest is 13 so they end up like going home and she brought claudia with her so she wasn't alone but i'm still like really unclear how her how parents of 13 year olds would be like yeah totally like go into new york city to yeah. club well she's from new york so it's like it's not like yeah I mean, but she used to live there so she's they weren't like... gonna stay there though they were just um there right. to come and then come back i don't know just, anyway took a, a cab they seem so to that's take like a cab the love the interest way. part and they make up and they do end up kissing like and that's kind of the weird thing because yeah. we looked it up and that actor is 22. What? And when they filmed it, the Stacy character, the that actress was 14. What? Yes. Yeah. She was born in 1980. He was born in 1972. Weird. Creepy. 
So that's really, really weird. And I'm like confused why they had to uh, employ an actor who was 20. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Why couldn't they give her a love interest? Why couldn't they make a German, ex- like ex- a cousin, whatever, who was 14? I don't know. They couldn't find any actors they with the good German accent. I mean, the only yeah. other one they had was Logan, who obviously blew the Kentucky accent. Right. Um, well, he so, just dropped that immediately. But who's so that? Logan is the kid from My Girl 2, um, Nicholas. Um, but yeah, Logan is from Kentucky originally. And he like starts off being like, hi, Marianne, I'm from Kentucky. I love Kentucky. It is a great place. And then literally like two scenes later, he's like, hey, Marianne. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about my accent. Uh, oh, I guess I don't need it because I'm cool. Like it's, it was really weird. Yeah, it was <laughs> so like weird. at some point I was like, where is he from? Um, so, yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a ton to do either except like fight off the advances of the mean girl whose name is K- Koki. Koki Miller, Koki, yes, <laughs> or yes. something. <laughs> Who's yes. played by? And I mean, I'm just gonna call her Gia um, because she was Gia from Full House. She's like the token bitchy mean girl in like most '90s productions. Uh, I saw a meme recently that was like, "If you see this, if this girl shows up in a movie, like she is a bitch or something." Um, Can you imagine, like, you are typecast as like? I mean, a I would definitely. I mean, yeah, in the nineties, people I mean, resting I know bitch like face. A, then, like, they'll they're gonna yeah, cast you as and, that. And bread and butter. Like, I'm sure she wasn't like looking a gift horse in the mouth and being like, "Oh no, Listen, like, I'd why rather do be, I look like a bitch." <laughs> I know. Rather be the bitchy girl than the token ugly girl. Yeah. Um, any day, That's true. any day. That's true. But so they have a stupid plot where they're like, "Let's get, let's um." Like, get back at the babysitters because they're mad that Christy sent them to an open field where the sprinklers started and they got all wet. So now their mission is to, like, bring them, like, suffering. So their big plot to get back at them is a throwing a stink bomb at the kids summer camp, which the kids immediately, like, throw into the neighbor's yard. And it goes off there instead. And then B, they trash the greenhouse at the end. Um, but then get stuck in this newly poured cement with their like ugly boots. And then, yeah. So they're pretty stupid and, and pointless because it's not, it's, in, at least in the TV show, there was a little bit of like, why is Logan being nice to them and like touching, yeah. you know, you're like, there was a little suspicion. Whereas here, there's no question, like he doesn't care about them and only likes Marianne. But I'm more for those subplots again than like the Christy, like dad one. Like I think that's more in like yeah. the teenager, oh, yeah, sure. like wheelhouse than like that very serious stuff about that. And I think they wanted to make this movie a little bit deeper, which I totally appreciate. But I just don't think that was like what the babysitters crowd really want wanted. You know, just like felt out of place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so those are like the other kind of subplots. And then like the so the other subplot is that Claudia is uh, like we said failed science or whatever. So they have to help her out. So that's like kind of a cute one because they like all give her their good luck charm. So she like goes and takes the test. But before that, to make her memorize uh, what I guess was like an anatomy kind of lesson, they do like what all like mid nineties movies do, which is make like a really awkward, like white rap situation. (laughs) And they do like a hip hop version of and make up a song about like the workings of the brain and what like the basically like brain, anatomy brain, center of the chain of the chain. Dun, dun, dun. And they're like, boom. It's, I mean, like Justin Timberlake, like, like beatboxing like, kind of a thing. Three men and a little lady, like <laughs> yes, white yes. person rap with their one black and, friend. Oh, God. It's just so painful to watch. And you're just like, oh, God. I just remember. I mean, you remember when like. You know, you could now you could think of like, OK, writers and stuff would be like, OK, how do we inject some like cool current stuff into this? Like, let's make them rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rap. Rap yeah. is cool. Kids love rap. Rap is cool. That's like a stamp of cool. Not it's that not cool. So yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That part is a little embarrassing. Um, and then for some unknown reason, we have um, amazing actress Ellen Bernstein. <laughs> Um, who you know was in The Exorcist and uh, Requiem for a Dream, um, very famous actress 
is for some reason the mean lady next door. I mean, she does great, but I'm like, we yeah. don't need Ellen Bernstein like in this in this movie. <laughs> like, we can get but some other lady. When she had like a an extended scene, I was just like, ah, uh. <laughs> I was like, that's what acting is Wait, like. Was it like the, it was it so- the tea scene with Don? Was it that scene? No, it was just even at the end where she oh. like went to the the they presented her with the greenhouse and she kind of gave like a couple of lines of how thankful she was and whatever and I like mean, what she was going to do with it. True master yeah, and I was at like, work. Ah, I was like That's acting. That's how it's done. Like, let me put my feet up and just watch instead of just like awkwardly cringing and be like, God, like it's like oh, in Wayne's oh, World. Bad. It's like in Wayne's World when the bad yes. guy actor is at the gas station and then they bring in Charlton Heston and, and they're like, wow. This is crazy. Because it's like, it's a struggle when you yeah. see bad acting and you're just like, oh, this is like hard to yeah. watch. Like it's it's supposed to be an enjoyable experience and or maybe not if it's like a, a rough scene, but still like you, your brain shouldn't have to do any work like watching people. Like, <laughs> yeah. not, and, and these are kids, so I'm not going to be, I don't want to be too hard on them. I mean, they're just like child actors and whatever, but it was like, yeah, it was just like a little rough or, around the edges, but um. I will but, say that it's sweet. the weirdest thing to me, again, back to the strangeness of the summer camp, is that the way they like identify the kids in their different little camps is they give them each a different colored pot holder, which they safety pin on the front of their clothing, and then they have to run around all day with this giant pot holder like flapping around and like hitting them in the face. And they're doing like relay races and like can you imagine trying to do like a, a three legged race with a pot holder flying and like hitting you in the face and be like, <laughs> and the kids what? are like I wearing this pot holder. The kids are like the age of three and five. So like a giant pot holder on them is like pretty bulky. <laughs> it's gonna weigh them down. Uh, and like that's silly. the other thing. I wish they did more um looking at the little kids and like their different personalities because you had like a kid that had an imaginary friend and they kind of made that as a joke but like like delving into that or like what was with the girl who spoke really quietly and then her sister had to keep translating even though like she didn't speak that quietly <laughs> yeah. yeah and it was so like and then they had like that um that group the Rogowskis Rogowskis yeah. that are like in the series yep. too or in the yep. books too and and they don't really delve into that. And like, I just wish they had dealt into the kids a little more. You know, I just feel like they picked the wrong things to yeah, like take to focus out. On, yeah. yeah. It just felt Definitely. really just not, they not done well. The, the cozy nostalgia of the, yeah. the books. Right. I think so. Right. Yeah. Kind of a miss, but anything else on the, on the flick before we go into the other um, ones? I would like to see, um, a, like, them I think we do need a babysitter's club reunion where the girls are like 30 almost like a now and then style yeah. you know where they'd be yeah. old and like where, where are, are all those yeah. girls what now they because now? they're they have such types right you're yeah. like okay Jesse's the ballerina right. and would they Chrissy's have stayed the friends tomboy. did they stay friends throughout did they high school friends? probably not and what did what did these typecasts mean for them as they were older, right? Because that's Wait, always interesting. Are you interesting. talking about the actors or the actual characters? The actual characters. Like, what does it mean to have these sort of, uh, like, I'm saying typecast, but just these, like, roles in this friendship group, and then what does that mean for you, like, when right. you're out of it? Because I'm assuming they didn't stay friends. I mean, you you have these childhood friends, but, Claudia like, meets art you... friends in, like, two seconds yeah. and is out of there. Oh, definitely. Don definitely. moves back to exactly. California. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's just, forget it, forget it. Okay, the only other thing I have to say is, what was your favorite deuce box? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I knew you were going to ask this. Because I time where they roll yeah. out juice boxes yeah. for the kids, and they were crayon, the crayon. Ocean uh, spray. Cray, ocean spray ones. Yeah. Crayon apple, whatever, like blah, blah, blah. And it just made me think of juice boxes, and I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite juice right. box? <clears throat> so my favorite juice box was the Sips. Um, the wow. ice, the iced, iced tea, tea. <laughs> or lemonade. Uh, well, both were good, but the lemonade yeah. is like a little too tart sometimes. So I think as like a regular drink, I preferred the iced tea. Um, but yeah, it was sips with like a couple extra s's. Um, wow. yes. And then we also had the definitely had the ocean spray ones. Like free, I say those are probably the main juice boxes we probably had when when we were little. Mm-hmm. Um, remember the Beatrix Potter one, the Peter Rabbit ones were like seemed like know. very ritzy. And I never got those. And then you had your juicy juice. Okay. I was going to say, so I can define my like timeline of life by the juice boxes that came out and what we were drinking. Okay. Yeah. Here's how it goes. So, well, okay. 
I'll, I'll say the first ones that were untouchable for us were like ecto cooler. Okay, oh, yeah. we did never got those or any sort of high C. That or was whatever not in our those house. ones in the we barrel never got are. Those. Yeah, never got the jujus or whatever they're called. They're <laughs> called something funny. No, they're called something like something funny. So we never had those. Sweetie is right. Um, our parents either did crayon uh, ocean spray mm -hmm. that like ones and those were the white ones which appear in this film yes. so it's like crayon raspberry crayon apple blah 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 then they went on like a healthy kick and they were like 100% juice only and they made us drink juicy juice which were these little tiny mini ones which, remember looking back seems like those were very sugary though like those didn't seem like 100% juice. juice no they were and Isn't remember we got the, the the cans that were like basically the like the giant a big, cans yeah. the giant cans where, where you'd make one little hole thing, in yeah. them yes <laughs> you have to use the other side of the can opener yeah. I like i never was, understood that it was, I was like i don't deal, get this yeah. in like late 80s mid to late 80s early 90s it wasn't a lot of 100% juice i think juicy juice was the only one and there wasn't really like a lot of organic stuff right so that was like the one thing and then, but then, do you remember this phase, sweetie, when we had Boku, yeah. which was like the a really giant. big ones, which I couldn't even <laughs> no. finish. Like, dad would put that in a juice box or my <laughs> lunch box, and I would be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like, I've like all of it left. It was like very frustrating. And you to me couldn't like I could not save it. You couldn't like seal it up and drink it later. No. It was a one-time no. thing because you pull off yep. the the top, and it's just that's yep. it. Um, and then like later on we did have Capri Sun so okay, the, yeah. those were like delicious um, those were probably the best I'd say of like probably my favorite out of all the juice boxes sips were really good though the iced tea loved that yeah that could not have been good for you though I mean that nope. was basically sugar water <laughs> I don't think there was any tea in that I'm <laughs> sure it's say. better than the barrels <laughs> of like toxic blue water but um, yeah, I loved you. But do you, I, do you ever drink juice had, boxes now? No, I really get a kick out of it. I have not. It's literally two sips. Why That's did what you makes drink it so funny. Box? I don't know. Sometimes I've just I've been with kids or I've babysat for them or whatever. I've been Still like, yeah, boxes? I'll take I'll take a juice a juice or my friends have kids, so I'll be like, can I have a juice box? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it like it takes like a sip and a half, and they're like, done. <laughs> yeah. Well, the juicy juice ones were so tiny. Remember, they so were like tiny. little mini squares. Dude, I gotta tell you, I could barely finish those right. as a kid. What was I drinking? As we've already Nothing. talked about, we were not juice drinkers. We would drink like two <laughs> sips of juice, and then we'd I'm be done. Still not. Right. I'm still not. Juice a is lot. a lot for it's me. Just, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Not water. Like, okay. just everybody drink a, water. It's fine. I'm um, having a deja vu moment. <laughs> I swear to God, we've already talked about juice boxes in life. Yeah. And I've had this moment with you. This is very weird. Yeah. Do you ever have those where you're just like, this has happened? Well, we, I think we talked about this recently. Maybe that's Because we were talking okay. about the juice. Would dad would go, <laughs> go around and drink oh. all of our juice. Um, juice boxes, man. Good times. But wait, and then some kids had like Hershey's chocolate milk juice boxes, Ooh, which no. I was like, not no, juice, no, but no. it was chocolate milk. And I was just so jealous of those um, yeah. always. So yeah, that's that's sweetie and sweetie on juice boxes. Um, so that's it for the movie, right? Yep. Okay. So we each watched an episode of the '90s show. Which one did you watch? Marianne and the Marianne brunettes. and the Brunettes. Okay, me as well. So that's like the first episode I think of the sh of the show. So it does a good job oh. of like setting things up. So it's like here are all the crazy things that happened this week, and they like go through all the little like weird babysitting jobs they had. Um, the characters in the show are not like well-known actors or actresses. Um, I pretty much just know them from this show. And like Sweetie said, the girl who plays Christy is just like burned in my brain as like, that's Christy. Like, I feel like I yeah. know her. <laughs> like, I know. Oh, yeah, that's Christy. She always wore... I, I don't know if she just like fits so much with what the book person like was or something. Like, I don't know. Made her like after that. Like all yeah, of them I really. So. Um, yeah, they did. And she wears like ugly baseball hats also, but then also oversized sweatshirts over like white turtlenecks, which was always very upsetting to me um, also. So, yeah. And then the the Dawn character is basically the same, but like I'll also rem always remember her face um, as Dawn. But then, yeah, no one else really of no. I remember Marianne was like very fragile. Like her character was so like, yeah. ugh, like it was just like on eggshells. Yeah, also, like, maybe not the best. I mean, the acting is a little bit, you know, to be discussed in this, in the TV, but it's like a TV, like, TV show. So, like, you know, it's going to be, I felt like, a little bit less professional, right? Mm -hmm. And and their kids. Um, but, but I loved but it. They, but and, but and I, we, loved, yeah, I loved it, too, and I think it, it really fit. Yeah. And it just and they made felt me like, feel cozy. Like, 
Like, right. yeah, them Super all around cozy. the phone, like yep. eating junk food. I love that shit. Yeah. They felt like real girls and they felt like they were all really friends too. Like, I just feel like they really captured the thing about, and I think what we'll talk about the new show, but that's like what they're doing too, is that it's like at the, ev- at the end of every episode, it's like a little regroup maybe of being like, okay, this is why we're friends and this is why we have this relationship. And the one we watched is the Mary and the Brunettes and it's about her. So she's like sort of casually dating this Logan guy. And as we said, it's like middle school dating. So that's just like, we're dating and we're a friend and we like, I talk to you and hang out with you alone and you're a boy, like that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So um, she gets wind through Christy that these um, girls who they Nick, they name the brunettes are sort of the more maybe more popular and more glamorous girls in the seventh grade are one of them mercy isn't that such like a girl and girl's name <laughs> yeah. who's like after your boyfriend um is after logan and really likes him and has a crush on him so is trying to steal him from marion and marion's just like you know what like he can do kind of can do whatever he wants but also like i trust him he's a nice guy he's not gonna like go after he would never like someone like that but then they like you know she's he's doing unbeknownst to the babysitters club a science project with marcy so he has to spend all this time with her and they like read that as he's like cheating on marianne let's say so they're spying on him so they like they spend the whole episode just like looking like going to the library and like peeking through the stacks at him and at in like lab awesome. class and yeah just like all this really funny like middle school stuff that is just so pertinent and makes you again why I think the movie didn't work because you were missing a lot of that school component which everyone can yeah. relate to um, and they so then it comes out you know that Logan like didn't like her at all and there's just all this like these great kind of exchanges like Mar- Marcy at all didn't like Marcy but there's all these great exchanges with like the popular girls and then the babysitters club kind of one upping them you know kind of like throwing a pie pie. in her face or like spraying like the kind of the lead girl Marcy with a hose I mean it's like really just like classic you know when you when you I mean again I'm, I'm sure this is not every person's experience but you had this popular group of girls in middle school or high school and they were freaking they annoying seem very you, popular like the babysitters yeah. seemed cooler um, i know they did but i don't think they were because you like those were just you know and maybe those girls just thought they were popular the they popular only girls hung out, thought yeah, they, they were only popular. hung out with themselves but they yeah. were definitely the kind of girls that would be like smoking in the bathroom yes exactly um, so every i'm sure like there's a group of like that at every school and you know whether they're trying to steal your boyfriend or not like people are familiar with that unless you're those girls but then maybe you're not like reading the babysitters club hmm. interesting i should ask them yeah um, <laughs> but yeah it was just like so adorable and i just remember how much i love that show and it was so cute and it, and i think also at that time it was like pretty rare to see television shows out of your books that was not something that really happened then mm-hmm. now kids are so spoiled because that happens almost automatically <laughs> yeah. a popular series is always turned into a tv series or a movie now but when we grew up like that was like pretty far few and far between you didn't really get yeah. that you to know? be fair i don't think i read very many actual babysitters clubs like i think they were a little too old for me when i mm-hmm. was reading them and i like kind of understood them but like not yeah. not 100 percent. i remember i got one for christmas um but it was like a much later one like i don't know number 45 or something um and that was the only one i owned and then i remember liz had a couple that you inherited and then they were like on your bookshelf so i was highly into the spinoff series which was the california diaries which um is about don's other life basically in california um they are going into eighth grade i think in that series the beginning of that series um and it was just fucking amazing i love that series um i've bought a bunch on kindle i I own a couple of the hard copies wow so great um but really good books i recommend you pick those up um and then yeah so that was my exposure my main exposure to the babysitters club the 90s show and then also i think i just like looked at a lot of the covers but maybe didn't read the actual books so we had like several of these books at home at least and the two i remember the most are um claudia and the phantom caller where she's like holding that kid on her waist 
and is talking to into the like um one of those wall phones yeah like definitely up on, mounted on the wall with the really <laughs> long cord um that one marianne saves the day where she's like looking at a thermometer up high like what what could this temperature be um that one i remember um and then we had the karen little uh babysitters called little sister books with karen the witch mm-hmm. next door which we talked about uh, during watcher in the woods um we think uh allegedly and um what else yeah I th- so, I just, that was that was my main exposure for sure yeah, yeah definitely i mean the covers are so great so I, I i agree um all the ones that you mentioned i remember and then additionally i remember the ghost at dawn's house so they're like going up the stairs all like creepy ghosty uh, Logan likes Marianne. That one was really cute. Um, Christine the Snobs. I don't remember that one, but sort of. Um, goodbye, Stacy. Goodbye. Where did she go? Don't remember that one. I know. I don't remember. Um, which one? Which one else? Uh, oh, welcome back, Stacy. I guess she comes back. <laughs> she <is> uh, spoiler. <laughs> Stacy and the mystery of Stony Brook. I remember that one. She's in like front of a haunted house. That one's great. And then um, the super specials, which were sort of like you would graduate into those when you, because the babysitter's clubs books were like kind of small. They weren't yeah. like very long, but then these super specials were these white covers that we've talked about before because it was a summer camp one. That's kind of now the iconic super special. I want to say, and um they were longer so i felt like once you're a little older you'd graduate to those and so the camp one is babysitters club super special number two but then there's number one where they're um on board there is european vacation one there's one where they go to hawaii um they go everywhere apparently um they go to california Sea City, I don't know where the hell that is. Shadow Lake, Aloha Babysitters, as I said. There's one in front of Buckingham Palace. New York, New York. Jesus. Island Adventure. I mean, it's nice to read these. Too many super For specials. For sure. One could yeah. call this episode a Sweetie Club super special. Just saying. Yeah. I know, um, I know. So, yeah. So, uh, to finish tonight's podcast, um, we'll talk about the new series on Netflix. It's so good, you guys. Um, Sweetie was into it for sure. Um, a couple thoughts. Sweater. Oh, yeah. So I've only watched one episode. It's adorable. So first off, um, Alicia Silverstone plays the mother of Christy, which if that doesn't make you old, feel old, I don't know what else would. Um, I was I literally gassed when she came into the frame. She Me looks. Too. Me too. She looks I amazing. She was, I like, mean, does she look like the mom of four kids? Doubtful. Um, no. But, but she is mom. I mean, she's mom age now. So that's yeah. that is what it is. Um, what was I going to say? I thought she had like retired from acting or something. Yeah. So I was like, I what? Too. I was she super. wrote like a vegan cookbook. And yeah. it was very she's basically done. Let's <laughs> be real. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was great. And it starts off very, very new, which I appreciated, too. So the other ones, both the 90s TV and then the. Uh, movie just jump you right into already this established babysitters club mm-hmm. this one it's really the founding so it's christy getting the idea there's an element of like she's no longer even friends with claudia at this i mean she is but they're next door neighbors but they like used to be friends when they were little but they're not as friends anymore she's really just friends with marianne and then you know you meet Stacy, who's actually friends with Claudia. So I thought like that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And they do some like kind of cool throwbacks to '90s stuff because the way they kind of fiddle with um, you know everyone has cell phones now. So the whole idea of the Babysitters Club being there's one number where you'd reach all these babysitters. What number could we put? And the reason they have it be at Claudia's is because Claudia says, oh, my family had to get like when you get Internet bundles, you do you have to get you know one random phone number that you don't use because everyone has cell phones. So I know we have this weird landline. And then when they have the first day of the babysitters club, they bust out this old phone. And it's that phone from like the like late 80s or even 80s, 90s, where it was see through and you could like see all the. Mm-hmm. You know, the little uh, gadgets the inside phone. the phone, I all the wires and everything. Yeah. So cool. it was like cool girl phone for sure. 
and they're staring at it and the girls are like are you sure this thing works because it's <laughs> some antique i mean it's basically like a rotary phone to kids from like in the 2020s so i think it's a really cool update because it's for you know it's for people who remember the old series and also like has have grown up with that old technology but then like the new girls and the new girls are great actors uh, actresses they're like great i love them all already and they're doing a great sort of like uh Ma- like ma- mash up between uh mash up between like the old stuff and the new stuff and updating it. I feel like they're just doing it yes. brilliantly. Yeah. And okay, and then just one more thing. Um they've updated uh well Claudia is still of Asian descent. I think originally she's Japanese. um Japanese and they did kind of uh in the 90s TV, I don't know like how successful they were at that. That girl didn't look totally Japanese I'm just gonna say like she might have been half Japanese um but this one um Claudia remains Japanese and then they updated it so Marianne is an African-American and uh Christy's still white and Stacy's still white and then I haven't seen the other girls yet or if they are even come up or not yep. so I don't so know how, Don they, how they updated is that is now Latina which I think is like a great update um <clears throat> she's a great character. Um, she comes in like the third or fourth episode. Okay. Um, um, and yeah, they just they make a bunch of like little tweaks um, throughout that like like the phone one that are just like so perfect. Um, they have like great storylines. Um, I cried for like most of the second half oh like of God. the series. Like it's just like so freaking good. Um, I my favorite. So who is your your who was your favorite babysitter? Who's my favorite babysitter? Um, like who was when you were not now, but like when you were. Yeah, when were I was reading. reading it. God, I don't know. What? what do you mean I don't mean, know? everyone has a favorite. I don't like. I don't remember their storylines enough to say like why I would attach on. And like you said, I think oh. like there's a bit of everyone in. It was just like in yeah, all of the babysitters for me. Mine was Claudia, and I was obsessed with yeah. Claudia. Yeah, um, she definitely friend, was the coolest. My friend Kim had this like uh, life, not life size, but like a big doll. Uh, Claudia and I got to like oh. borrow her for two weekends <laughs> and I was obsessed with it um, but she was just so cool and I like I think I wanted to believe that I was a Claudia but I was like more realistically probably a Christie um, mm. just with like again with like the bossy thing but um, but yeah I think the series is great um, it features also in the first episode this is not really a spoiler but Morbida, Des- Morbida Destiny who is the the witch next door from that iconic Karen little sister book that I was talking about um she is like a recurring character in this series and it's like I've never wanted anything else in my life than that and it's just the way that that they, that they like interweave her into the story and the plot is just like fantastic um and so there's just yeah just like guys watch it you can watch it literally in one night uh, my friends Frankie and Vanessa watched it in one night um so how many possible. episodes are there um, so there's eight uh, actual episodes, and then they do the last two are um, the Camp Moosehead one, uh, super special number two. Oh. And so I like to tell people to like watch the first eight and think of like the eighth episode as like the season finale. And then okay. um, we're actually Jen and her books may have mentioned this, so I'm sorry, Jen, if I uh, st- stole this tip from you. Um, and then think of the last two as like a, a follow up, like movie to that series or like a, a special. Um, but it's great. So watch it. I think I'm just so happy. Um, and then additionally, um, if you're interested in everything Babysitter's Club, they also just released a documentary on Netflix called um, I Am Claudia Kishi. And it is about um, um, Asian Americans experience like growing up with that character and how she was awesome. such a trendsetter and like so Aww. opposite of like regular Asian characters in in all sorts of media right where you always have mm-hmm. like the Asian sidekick or like the best friend who was Asian never like the main character but Claudia yeah. was like the coolest one who everyone wanted to be and that was just such a game changer so it's a really cute cool. doc it's only 15 minutes um, or like 16 or something um, I think it could have been an, an entire hour and a half, but what do I mm-hmm. know? Uh, but it's really good, so recommend. So that is the rest well. of the series because I started the second one. Are they all from the point of view of a different babysitter, or yeah. they or they hop around? Yep, 
they hop around. That's good. Um, so yeah, we get a little little time with everybody. Which That's is awesome. Nice. And a couple. I mean, most of them get like two probably episodes, but um, yeah, it's it's fantastic. And they update. They just make great updates to characters. Like they completely, for me, change the character of Karen, who is Christie's um, stepsister, mm-hmm. into this just like amazing character. Oh. I'm obsessed with so. Um, good to Thanks. love your Karen. <laughs> I know, I know. It's too bad that that. that well, that was like. But I mean, like you said, like that. You were like a little too old. Uh, sorry, young right. when but the babysitters came out. Age for Karen, for Karen, little sister. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just like you're like Skipper. Ugh, I knew you were gonna say that. I hated Skipper. <laughs> Skipper with the flat, feet. flat shoes, flat feet. Like, give me a break. <laughs> well, Dumb. what about Barbie with a permanent arch? Come on, that's what everybody wants. Did you ever try to put Barbie in sneakers? That was worse. It always fell <laughs> never off. worked. Yeah, <laughs> there'd always be like one Barbie sneaker. <laughs> They'd be like, like hanging off. Yep, <laughs> or just like on her, the floor. Like, her perfectly arched yeah, shoes. You never had a pair of sneakers. You'd always lost no. one. And then she, you'd always have to put her in the pumps. And you're like, okay, I want her to do athletic things. Like she can't play tennis right. and pumps. She wasn't made to to succeed. <laughs> She can't play other tennis than and, looking and hooker heels. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. So sad. Um, but, yeah, Babysitter's Club is great. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this triple dose of babysitters. Kind of want to get a couple books and read just for oh, yeah. nostalgia's sake. For sure. I'd love to do it. Maybe I'll pick up a couple super specials. Sweet I hope they don't change the covers. Yeah. I'm sure they have because, again, I'm looking at these covers and they've done some updates and I can't get behind them because they're boring as hell. I know. They are, the truth generic. about Stacy is literally like the Babysitter's Club and it has a cupcake on it. <laughs> the Can't Phantom Phone cupcakes. Calls. <laughs> the Phantom Phone Calls one is literally says the Babysitter's Club and then a pink telephone. That's yeah, it. I think the original covers are you have to like buy them on eBay. Jen in her books also um, has posted pictures of, of some of those on Twitter. Um, Maybe they don't have the rights to these like amazing drawings, but it also like made you they just like to, they need to update them with every, it's like all, all every book from when we were little now has a, a different cover. These covers are just really nice. They're like know. beautiful, They're very paintings. iconic. And yeah, so but yeah, anyways. Anything else before we go? I also love when the in the new series when they so th- she's like Claudia design a you know she's an ar- mm. artist so to design um a, a graphic because they decide to do a logo because they're gonna do actual um pass out flyers instead of doing any sort of like online marketing they decide and Claudia comes up with you know the iconic block letter baby blocks the babysitters club all spelled out and my heart like skipped a beat and I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great it was really great perfect really great. touches like that I know I know oh uh, yeah so yeah watch that watch the babysitters club I mean watch all the babysitters club stuff yeah if, just if do it all have like a big it. babysitters it club weekend a rainy day weekend right. just do it it's just, just do it it's a great time um, but yeah, come find us on Twitter at the Sweetie Globe or on Instagram at Large Mars Sent Us. Thank you as always for listening. Bye. Bye. Lucas.